Uber CEO says, and I think he's entirely right about this, that in 10 years, nobody is going to own a car. Here is what Uber CEO Dara Krasoshashi, I think that's how it's pronounced, said that in a decade, nobody is going to own a car. And I think this is probably correct. Hopefully you won't own a car. You will essentially come to us and we will give you the choice of uh, whether you want to take a uh, regular Uber, uh, you want to pool with someone, but we're also going to show you this is a bus stop that's next to you and a bus is going to be coming in six minutes from now. You can take the bus today or you can take an electric bike or scooter today as well. We want to give you every single choice. Okay, so the car industry, I, I totally agree with this, by the way. I think the car industry in the United States is going to completely collapse in a matter of, I think 10 years is too soon. I think within 20 years, automated driving combined with Uber technology is going to allow you to not own a car. Right? Basically, you're just going to pull up an app on your phone, if we even have apps on phones by then. We're going to be able to simply pull up an app on our phone, punch a button, and then a car with the requisite number of seats will arrive to take you to your destination. It won't be worth it to own a car. You're just going to buy a subscription from a company like Uber. You're going to pay 100 bucks a month to buy that subscription from Uber. And you're going to pay that $100 a month instead of paying for an individual ride. And you can use as many cars as you want. And that's how the car industry is going to work. How exactly do you crack down on that? Well, people like Tucker Carlson have said on, on the show, actually, that they would prevent automatic driving from happening to protect jobs. But you know what's going to happen then? All that's going to happen then is other economies are going to take advantage of those technologies. And those other economies are going to grow faster than the United States economy. You want to know why America's economy is the dominant world economy? Because it does not prevent innovation. Because it does not freeze the economy and attempt redistribution. It does not see innovation as a threat. It sees it as a benefit. And for all those people who think, oh, well, we're going to kill too many jobs with all this stuff. We have literally said this about every technological advance of the last 200 years. For 200 years, people have been doomsaying that every technological advance was going to end with massive unemployment. It has not happened. There are people who will be unemployed for a short period of time. And then they'll get jobs in other industries. There will be people who are retrained for other jobs. Should we ease their way? Sure. That's what social fabric is for. That's where social institutions come in. But this idea that from the top down, you're simply going to redistribute jobs to particular areas you need to win in a presidential election, this says that the federal government is simply too powerful. This says that the federal government is involved in crap that it should not be involved in in the first place. And that is true whether you're talking about oil drilling under Barack Obama or whether you're talking about car industry stuff under, under Donald Trump. This is not the business of the federal government. This is not the business of the presidents of the United States absent a national security need.